Almighty God, we love you and we thank you, God, for the opportunity that desires to be in your presence right now, God. We pray, God, that you would cleanse our hearts and make us worthy uh, to receive what you have for us this evening. God, that you would open our ears and open our hearts to receive the message and to keep the message and take that message, God, out into our world uh, this week as you command us to do. God, I just pray that you'll be with uh, Brother Joe right now, God, that you will uh, anoint him with your word, God, that you would uh, put on his lips the words that you would have him bring uh, to us that we would hear, and uh, God, I just pray that you'll uh, be with everyone who hears it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Scott. Don't forget Miles Mallory, uh, state mission author, that's for the state of Alabama, and for uh, goes to help in the area of disaster relief and WMU and a couple other areas as well. Opportunities for the week. Do not forget Wednesday night changes to 615 this Wednesday night. We invite you to be a part of that uh, on Wednesday night. Look forward to that time. Hopefully you looked around and if you saw somebody missing this morning, you'll call them, contact them and let them know that they were missed and uh, look forward to that. I don't know who your one is, but I hope you're praying for uh, one person and then you're contacting that person. You're it. That means you're having a conversation with that person and you're inviting them to come to church and then as well as inviting them that you would uh, go get them or meet them whenever they arrive, but be ready for them whenever they come and uh, be here. Uh, then do not forget the co-ed Sunday school class will be sponsoring a teacher's lunching for real town uh, school teachers uh, this later on they don't have a date yet and that's all right because this is for uh, what some of the teachers said is, is that somewhere around Christmas the supplies they get before the school year starts starts dwindling down and they uh, run out early so we're going to try to help them uh, build up and have a fresh supply whenever they start back to school and that's a good thing so uh, looking forward to that uh, So, and you'll hear more about that uh, and you can give and I didn't read this part uh, this morning but you can give cash or gift cards would also be ready uh, be a really great item uh, and uh, of course anything you want to bring will be greatly appreciated please start bringing supplies as soon as possible bring your supplies to uh, Brenda Slaughter and Amy Hughes or Dale and Diane Johnson and do that and we uh, would appreciate it. Appreciate that opportunity for that ministry for our, our area. This morning we preached on faith and that is the last of the groups that we've been doing for uh, the summer and now we'll move back in and we start tonight back in the book of John and looking forward to that. Uh, let me just tell you where we're going and ask you to pray a little bit. Uh, I've, I've already said something to Scott and I've talked to Tanner. Uh, if, if things go right for December, uh, we're going to preach on Christmas, but I'll preach the first sermon, Scott will preach, Tanner will preach, and then I'll preach the last sermon. And we'll all preach on Christmas. And... Uh, so, and we're going to work on that. We're going to have a meeting and begin to work on that. And as much as Scott's not too busy, he's got a job and he's working with a choir and now I'm going to put that on him. <laughs> and, uh, but he's a slaughter. He can handle it. <laughs> All right. John chapter 15. We, uh, if we look back, in the early part, in verses 1 through 17, the way to freedom, uh, we talked about that. Uh, the way to freedom is to be in Christ. And then he also talked about following the commands of the Lord. Uh, the primary command was to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love others. Loving others is what we ought to do and who we are. And then uh, he talked about understanding our relationship with the Lord. And we have a relationship with the Lord and we need to cultivate that relationship. And in part of that, growing and developing our faith glorifies the Lord. Whenever our faith develops and grows in its maturity, uh, 
we glorify the Lord by doing that. We pick up in verse number uh, 18 tonight, and we want to think about a word. It's called hate. Very strong word. It's not an easy word, but there is a lot of hatred in our world. There's a lot of things that, from a per perspective of a pastor, sometimes you talk to church members that they don't get along and they have uh, hate in their heart for one another. And sometimes you talk with husband and wives and, and for whatever reason they uh, have some hate going on. And then sometimes you discover that uh, even hatred within between parents and children and that is not an easy thing to deal with but it's something that is out there and that has uh, come but we're going to talk about a different hatred tonight and it's one that uh, you and I can readily see in the culture which we live and so we pick up in verse 18 and, and talk about this just for a moment and uh, we'll read verse 18 through 24 and then we'll move on after that if the world hates you you know that if it hates me, it hated me before it hated you. That is, Jesus says to his disciples, the world hates you because it hates, hated me before. And if you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep your words also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. That is, they do not know the Father. If I had not come and spoke to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no excuse for their sins. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also ha hated both me and my father. The message of hate is all through the Gospels. And actually, if you back up in the Old Testament, you see the message of hate there too. It may be not called that word hate, but you see that, and you remember me preaching, and I'm sure those of you that are Bible students out there remember you studying the Old Testament. The children of Israel would not hear the men of God, the prophets that God sent, they killed many of them. Why? Because they hated what they preached. If we look at Matthew, and you don't have to turn to these, you might want to write them down, but Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 through 22 and verse 44 talks about hate and Jesus talking about them hating him. Matthew uh, chapter 10 verse 16 through 23 uh, also talks about uh, hate and then Matthew 23 verse 34 and 35 talks about hate and then Mark chapter 13 verse 9 through 13 talks about hate and then there's a, another element of hate that's not just the world's hate but in John chapter 5 verse 16 it talks about hate from the religious establishment toward Jesus. He was opposed by those that were religious. It is also so that true in chapter 7, verse 19, chapter 8, verse 37, and verse 57, and chapter 9, verse 22, and chapter 11, verse 8. And all of those were opposition to Jesus. We live in a hostile world we do face opposition to our belief our faith our worship and our way of life and those are all 
extended toward us or pushed toward us in the way of hate. Now, I think I've used this illustration before, but I was amazed a number of years ago now that Sherry and I went on a mission trip with uh, 40-something other people out to South Dakota. The missionary out there was going to uh, set up for the group, our, the youth that were going to sing at uh, federal campgrounds. Called back. He said, uh, I found some individual-owned campgrounds where they can sing at but it's against the law for them to sing at a federal campground. We could not go there and do any kind of religious presentation whatsoever. And so we went to the private campgrounds and they put on their puppet show and sang and uh, presented the gospel. We live in a world and a culture that is against our belief and our faith and our worship and our way of life. And yet, somehow or another, just like I talked this morning, just like I preached this morning, Christians are asleep. We're, we're, we've become a part so much of the world that we've accepted that and we've not stood up, we've not spoken up, and we've not done anything to change the culture. We've just accepted the reality, that's the way it is. And we can't do anything about it. I, I wonder, I wonder if back in 1962 or 63, whichever it was, I, I wonder if that one woman, Madeline O'Hara, could, could push the right buttons to get Congress to take prayer out of school. I wonder what in 1963 would have happened if the Christian church would have stood up and said no. I wonder what would have happened if we would have rattled our congressmen and senators enough to say no. But we've accepted the things that have gone on. So much so that even over and over again, almost every year, some well-meaning young person, and I'm sure helped by their, pa uh, by their pastors and by their parents, have written essays at Christmas time and talked about the birth of Jesus and been told they couldn't do that or if they submitted that, they'd get a bad grade. That is hatred toward our belief toward our faith, but toward our worship and our way of life. And what Jesus is saying in these verses that I just read was Christ himself was different and Christians are to be different as well. We're not to be like the world. I, I love this part in verse 19. He says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. And we so much act like we are of the world. When Jesus says, I have brought you out of the world, I have given you a new life. Now you have life in me. You've been filled with the Spirit of God. You are to be different. There are those out there in whom uh, teach that you're to be separateless. You're to be separated totally from the world. And I'm not one that believes that, but they are those in whom that think that we are just to separate ourselves from the world and, and we're not to be involved in the world, but, but we cannot put ourselves in a cocoon and ever make a difference in the world. We cannot just come to our little holy huddle and, and have our good times and every now and then someone drift in I don't think that's what the Word of God teaches. But what does it mean whenever it says you're of the world or you're in the world, but you're not of the world? But we are in the world. That means we are in the world. It's not really a difficult thing. I believe we are, and I believe there are things that we need to be involved in. We need to have lost friends 
But we need to have a purpose with those lost friends. We need to have the purpose of winning them to Jesus Christ. We need to have the purpose of bringing them to church. We need to have the purpose of getting them involved in a Bible study. We need to have the purpose of discipling them so that they might have the opportunity to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's what small group Bible uh, studies are all about. Whether you have them on Sunday morning or whether you have them during the week, they ought to be intentional studies to bring people to Christ. And we ought to have intentionality about what we do. We are in the world, but we need to remember that second part. We're not of the world. You're here tonight and you're a Christian The Word of God teaches us that you have two places where you live. You live here in America. You live here in Tallahassee. You live here in Alabama. But you also have a place in heaven already. And just as you are a citizen of Alabama of the United States, you are a citizen of heaven already. Matter of fact, the Word of God teaches us that we ought to be more the citizen of heaven than we are the citizen of the United States. And in that process, now we are ambassadors for Christ's sake to the world in which we live. To present the gospel, to lay the Word of God before the world. Here's what you need to understand. This hatred that they have toward you and I and toward Christ, this hatred that they have is what needs to be overcome. And only Jesus can overcome that. And he wants to overcome that through you and I. He wants to overcome that through the church. He wants to use the church to touch those people's lives out there that hate the church, that hate our worship, that hate our faith, that hate our lifestyle. He wants to use us to touch them, to make a difference in their life, to reveal to them there is a better way. I wonder, though, how many of us really think that, there, that our life is a better way, that our faith is a better way, that our worship is a better way. problem within the church family is we hate a lot of those out there we 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 have even a problem within the church family across church lines of hating one another we don't get along until we learn to get along we will never make a difference in the life of those that are lost until we learn to love and accept and forgive like Jesus. And you need to remember something as I need to remember something on a consistent basis. And that is this, is that God loves me and he forgives me and he accepts me. Just as I am without one plea. That's how he accepts me. He accepts me with who I am and the way he made me and although he made me in one way and I chose some other ways and you have too and so has the world Jesus begins in verse 20 and he 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 makes a couple of statements that that I really like and and we won't finish Christ and Christians are different Christianity condemns the way of the world the, the way we live, it condemns their lifestyle. If we live right and, and, and live like God wants us to live. And, and here's a problem with the world. They look at you and I and they expect us to be perfect and we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We should not, we should not be satisfied that we make mistakes. And, and matter of fact, I'll I just tell you, if you are a Christian and you're a follower of Jesus and when you make a mistake, if the Holy Spirit doesn't speak into your mind and your heart and grip you, there's something wrong with your Christianity. 
Because the Holy Spirit will not. He, it's the light that's in you. It's the life that's in you. The light and the life that's in you will not be satisfied with sin in your life. Somebody said it like this. Christ has accepted me the way I am, but he loves me too much to leave me that way. He will lead me to be a better person. He will lead me ultimately to be more Christ-like. And if we live like Christ wants us to live in the struggles of our life, we will condemn the world whenever they look at us and, and we've straightened ourselves out, not that we could straighten ourselves out, but that Christ has straightened us out and Him straightening us out in the process, others see the change in our lives and, and then they feel the condemnation of their own life. That used to be more so than it is today. The people of God are nonconformists. What does that mean? It means that we are not to conform to them. That, that's where we connect. When we're in the world, we're with those people that are lost. We're, we're around them at work. We're around them at play. We're, we're around them wherever we're at. We're, we're engaged with them, and we ought to be, but we do not conform to their way. Somebody years ago talked about there's a bridge, and that, that bridge comes over this way, and we've, we've become Christians, and we've walked over that bridge, and those people that were over there, as we've walked over that bridge, and the change that has taken place in our life, we go back over on the end of the bridge and we're back with those same people that we were with over here but we're different we're not like those any longer and not being like those any longer now we come to the end of the bridge and we come to make a difference in them to tell them about Jesus we, we've come to reveal to them Christ and, and whenever, when Pete and them sing from time to time and, and others sing, and oftentimes they sing and they talk about a changed life. I, I love that song that Pete sings. I've loved it for years that uh, talks about the dad and, and when the kids are, are afraid of him and he s tells them, you don't have to be afraid of me anymore. I'm not the dad you used to be. And whenever they see where dad used to go and they talk about that and he says, I don't go there anymore. And there's a reason he doesn't act the same way. And there's a reason he don't go to the same old places. There's a reason that he's different. And it's called Christ in you. It's called salvation. And whenever that salvation takes place, and that reality of that relationship with, that is now connected with Jesus, and Jesus is living in you and through you, and there's a difference in your life. And as that difference touches other people's lives, then you and I become salt and light in a lost world. We become salt and light. And, and salt, I, I don't eat a lot of salt, but uh, I do like salt on a salad. And you just eat a, now I know some of you probably do this, but you just eat a, a, a plain green salad, that is sort of boring. But if you put a little salt on it, it makes it better. It, it makes it eatable. I, I like tomatoes, but they're a whole lot better with salt on them. Whenever you and I live our life as a Christian like God wants us to live it, we make the world better and we make the darkness light and they will want what we have. I didn't get far in this sermon tonight. Still got two more points. The thing, last thing I'd say to you tonight though is there must be a difference between the people of the world and the followers of Christ. There has to be an absolute difference in our life and their life. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for the truth of it. We pray, Lord, that 
as we get back and jump into the book of John that you will reveal to us. Lord, we, we know that we live in a difficult culture. We, we know that we live around those in whom do not like us. They don't like our worship. They don't like our faith. They don't like our lifestyle. But just as Jesus kept on and just as Jesus ministered, help us to do the same. In Jesus' name, amen.